sit. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Yeah, you got the donut around your neck because you like to escape. You like to squeeze through the fence, huh, don't you, buddy? Yeah. Yes, you do. It's my little, my little puppy there named Buddy. And there's Gabby. She's a ball full of joy and energy, as always. Hey, buddy. Watch this. Hey, hey, go. Yeah, there she goes. Ball full of energy. Yeah, drop it. Buddy, sit. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is Speed 252 and I want to thank you for pushing that play button. First of all, I usually like to kind of do some type of small blog in my car. Um, unfortunately, what I usually do, I actually do blogs in the car, have the car running. At this, point, at this moment in time, I don't think I will be able to have the car running only because the exhaust has now been changed. So it may be a little louder than normal. So I don't want to, I don't want it to interfere with the sound. So I guess going forward at this point, when we do blog in the car, there won't be no engine sound, there will be no radio, there will be no no coarse exhaust actually running in the back. Um, at some point, I will make a video on why I decided to go with this wrap, why I decided to go with this the exhaust, and why I decided to change the rims. Um, that's a great story that I would like to tell you guys and ladies, you know, down the road, and for everyone that's currently watching. If you are watching my channel right now, and you know you watch all my videos, I want to thank you so much, and I, uh, I appreciate you for taking the time to even watch my video and. Thank you for just being a supporter of mine. Um, once again, we're still a small channel, but we're slowly growing and we're slowly getting new subscribers every day. And I'm greatly appreciating if you if you are watching this right now and you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do. I love how you're part of the community. Um, I met so many awesome subscribers from through emails um, and in person, and it's just a great feeling just to, to meet all of you and and you walk up to me and I, I mean even when you walk up to me, I just get excited because I already know what you're coming for. They say hello and it just. I enjoy meeting people. I know a lot of people, you know, they don't like really talking to people that often, but I'm complete opposite. I mean, even at a YouTube call out, like um, people will, you know, come up to the car and ask me, you know, what about this rap and, and things like that. And I would literally get out of my car and have a conversation with them because I love meeting people. And I'm just genuine and super nice. And everything I talk about is really real and it's true. And I'm just down to earth. And if you ever see me out and about, Regardless of what I'm doing, come and say hello. I would love to meet you and greet you and, and, and shake your hand and, and go from there. So yeah, so once again, um, thank you for coming out to the YouTube call out in Pennsylvania. I greatly had fun and I greatly appreciate you um, for coming out and showing support to all of us. You know, Mike, Nick, um, me, uh, Dirty Mass Jack and the rest of the team that was out there as well. I know I had a couple of subscribers that asked me was I bringing any merch to PA. I actually did not bring any merch. Um, I do plan to bring merch to the North Carolina um, YouTube call out, so look forward for that. Um, I'm very excited because this will be my first time actually having something, you know, prepared for the fans and the followers to purchase and, and, and take something with them to, to remember and cherish and, and hold on to, you know, because I, I do want to share a piece of my life with all my followers and subscribers so they can kind of get an idea of, you know, who I am and, and why I am what I am to this day and just being a role model to something I always want to be and something I want to do. And this is my way of doing it. And now we're talking about cars. Another thing I want to talk about is... I recently did have my check engine light come back on again. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but I probably will in a future video for sure of why it came back on, um, what General Motors may have said, the reason why it came back on. And as you all know, like I, I, I love this car. Like you know, I just did all this, you know, this extra stuff to it, and so um, I do plan to keep it. But you know, there's some things that's going on that has to be taken care of. But you know, that's it is part of life you know it's mechanical is man-made so things are bound to break down at some point right so it, it is what it is no modification stuff related but you know i don't really have any modification except the exhaust honestly yes before i forget i went to cars and coffee uh this past saturday um i arrived a little late because i had to get off work in time but when i got there um there was lots of people there it was massive cars i mean it was some of everything you can think of i mean even cars that i think that existed in this area was out there it was super fun, but I will. I do want to thank you know the followers and subscribers who came up to me and actually said hello. Um, you know who you are. I really appreciate you walking up to the car and actually shaking my hand. That meant a lot to me, and um, I hope you definitely come to the YouTube call out because I would love to see you there again. I would love to meet you and shake your hand and and just you know maybe have a, a better conversation with you all. And I just want to just you know personally thank you for coming out. And, and viewing all the cars and showing everyone love, but I appreciate you for just coming up and saying hello because that was very, that meant a lot to me. And um, I want all my subscribers to know that once again, if you ever see me out and about, please feel free to come and say hello and shake my hand. I would love to talk with you, uh, love to get to know you and you know ask any questions that you would feel free to love to ask. Um, but with that being said, 
Let's hop into the meat and potatoes of this conversation, the mid-engine Corvette. So as you all know, I'm a huge fan of Corvettes. Um, I've been in love with Corvettes since the day I can remember. I do know that my first car that I ever was in love with was a Dodge Viper, but I still like them, but I much rather have a Corvette at this moment. I, I love everything about them. And we are currently now sitting in my C7 Corvette, which you all know that I actually have. And I truly do love and adore. But one thing let's talk about is a mid engine Corvette. I still have people coming to me and asking me, you know, what do you think of the mid engine Corvette? Do you actually still think it's coming out? What do you think it's gonna cost? What do you think it's gonna be the horsepower of this vehicle? Um, do you think they're gonna, it's gonna be a hypercar? Do you think they're gonna stop the C7s? You know, I'm getting lots of questions asked. But the main reason why I wanted to bring this up because, you know, would I like to see C8 Corvette? Absolutely. And my mind set on that right now? Absolutely. But I do want to ask you guys and ladies, do you think my next purchase should be a C8 Corvette? Um, you know, there's a lot of hype behind this car, right? I mean, it's supposed to come out in 2020. That's what everybody's saying. Some people say it's going to be coming out in 2019, but it's going to be a 2020 model. I don't know. But I do know I'm super excited for this car. I think that it is time for Chevrolet to actually, you know, just do something that's great. Just do something that's awesome. And get me wrong, the C7s are phenomenal cars. But, you know, Chevrolet has been trying to make this mid-engine Corvette for six decades now. And a lot of people was like, well, why couldn't they make it then? But they can also do it now. Ha ha. Well, as you all know, like, I love the, I love the network, right? I love the network. Um, I have a lot of friends in the YouTube world at this point. You know, Nick. Uh, Streets P717, Shane and Shane Designs, Pat Roel. Um, I know a lot of YouTubers and I love networking. And as far as just outside of YouTube, where I love networking with people within GM because I can get, you know, bits and pieces of information that other people can't get. And I really do have a really, I wouldn't say a strong pool in GM, but I do have a, um, a strong connection with people that work with General Motors, even in the corporate office. And so I know one thing I can definitely tell you that the mid-engine Corvette is definitely coming. Based off what I was told, it is definitely coming. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, all of a sudden now they're able to release the mid-engine Corvette when they couldn't do it back then. Well, here's the thing that a lot of people don't know, and this is actual true facts. This is no, this is no gimmick. There's no no way around it. So Chevrolet has the best um, the best feature as far as in the Corvette goes, right? Which is the uh, magnetic ride control. Um, they invented some the best thing and a lot of other cars don't even actually have this and Chevrolet has took it upon themselves to do something that's different and when you're in the Grand Sport and in the Z06 you can actually feel the difference between you know a normal C6 compared to a C7 with the magnetic ride control I mean it's unbelievable especially when the track and as you all know I have went to the track a few times and um, put this bad boy on the track and, and you can feel every bit of it this car just handles very well and the magnetic control is just something different and so what Chevrolet did was and created something that you know most people actually want. When you when you create something, people want to buy it. People want to you know take advantage of it because they think it's the next best thing as well. And in that case, I think so too. And I know a lot of you have been coming out about speculation on what the C8 mid-engine Corvette may look like. Some people say it looks like a Lamborghini. Some people say it looks like I don't know some type of Lotus. I don't think it looks like a Lotus. Um, some people say it's a you know a, a spit image of the C7 ZR1, the front end of it. It could be. Who knows? I know a lot of you have been saying it looks similar to a Ferrari. And with that being said, Chevy, Chevy and Ferrari kind of got together. And this is what I heard from my sources in the GM world. Chevy and Ferrari kind of got together and started talking. Ferrari wanted or wants Chevrolet's magnetic ride control. And Chevy wanted their main engine design. So... And, and and honestly, that kind of does make sense, right? Like they both have something that they both need. So why not share these designs so both can actually create something that's awesome? Chevy has the magnetic ride control. Ferrari has the blueprints for the mid-engine car. And you know, everybody knows who Ferrari is. Like that's, that's no doubt about it. Ferrari makes awesome cars. Like, I mean, I would love to have a Ferrari right now, but, um, but they're just freaking awesome, right? And so that's why I think now Chevy has came to the point where they're actually able to create this mid-engine Corvette because they created something else that somebody wants. So now let's trade a swap. And that's how life works in general, right? I mean, even if you're a kid and you have Pokemon cards, I mean, I grew up having Pokemon cards and I would honestly want to trade one card with one of my buddies. Um, we had a video game. I might want to trade one video game with him that had one, you know, that had something that he wanted. And that's just how life works. You know, you you got something great and somebody else has something great. You kind of want to get the, the feeling of what both of those products are like, so you kind of trade it. 
That's exactly what Ferrari and Chevrolet is doing. They're designing to trade blueprints on these vehicles. And so with that being said, do I think the, the mid-engine Corvette will look like a Ferrari? I don't know. It could, it may not be. I do know from what I was told from other sources that we are not going to be sad when this C8 mid-engine Corvette drops. That's for sure. I heard that, you know, a lot of people saying right now they don't like it. A lot of people don't like the 2018, 2019, I'm sorry, um, Chevy Camaros. A lot of people don't like the 2019 um, Chevy Silverados. But suppose that we're going to fall in love with the C8 mid-engine Corvette. And so, you know, I'm bringing it to the table with you guys. What do you think? Do you think it was a good idea that Chevy decided to trade out the magnetic rights control suspension for the blueprints of a mid-engine vehicle? Um, you know, if that was keeping them from making it in the future, in the past, then I think it was a good idea. In my books, especially, it's going to be something that's going to be, you know, revelational. It's going to be something different because they did a phenomenal job with the C7. So I can't wait to see what they do with the C8. I mean, I, I still don't know what the price is going to be like. You know, um, I have talked to some other Chevy people that actually work at Chevy dealerships that does is not located in my area. They said they they heard tip this one cost sixty five thousand dollars. I still think it's gonna cost somewhere between sixty five to eighty five. The base model. That's my opinion. Somebody else said one hundred and sixty-five thousand. I don't think it's going to cost one hundred sixty-five thousand. I hope it doesn't cost one hundred sixty-five thousand because, in my opinion, if you're going to spend one hundred sixty-five thousand on a mid-engine Corvette, you're better off saving a little bit more money and buying a McLaren or use a Lamborghini or something. I mean, granted, you can't compare the three, but you kind of can compare the three in that in that sense as far as price range goes. And um, and heck, I guess for, for most people, you know, the C7 Corvette is still going to be built alongside the mid-engine Corvette because if you don't know the plant has been doubled there's photos online that you know the the plant was one size and they spent four million dollars to double it so they're obviously going to keep building the C7 Corvette for at least a couple of years alongside the mid-engine Corvette as well if that's what it's going to be called a Corvette um, and so why would you dump $165,000 when you can buy your brand new Z06 um, so yeah so I don't know what the price is going to cost I do know I'm super excited about this car and I want y'all opinion one do you think I should look forward to buying a C8 mid-engine Corvette Two, what do you think about Chevy actually taking the idea of trading their blueprints with Ferrari to end up making this product, um, get rid of um, their, you know, their only plans of the magnetic ride control to giving it to someone else and then getting back, you know, blueprints of an engine. At the end of the day, I think it may be a great idea for both parties. Who knows? We will find out. I want to thank you for watching this video. I do want to cover something else uh, with this video, which is the YouTube call out in North Carolina, which is on June 23rd. I've gotten a lot of questions about me actually going to be there. I am planning to be there. I'm super excited. Um, the very first call out was super fun for me. Like it was an awesome experience. I was learning how to drag race and do everything with my Grand Sport. And I think for the North Carolina one, I think I'm going to end up racing a lot of good guys again. I'm thinking about challenging Mike again. I don't know which car he's going to drive. He's considering selling the Z06. Um, if he doesn't have that one, that'd be fine. But I'm considering actually challenging that one more time. For some reason, I think, some reason I think I can make him squeeze it in there somehow. If not beat him get somewhat close uh, i don't know i'm just thinking out the top of my head right now but i'm definitely planning to be at a youtube call out i'm dope i'm definitely hoping to have a booth um to where i can you know have merchant that you guys can you know buy and ladies can buy and you know take home and have with you and i would just love to share some of that experience with you all um once you get there please come say hello i would definitely be there with the corvette um, it's possible I may have both of my vehicles there. I haven't fully decided on that just yet because I'll say I can only drive one at a time. But I'm very grateful to be doing this. I am very grateful to have you part of my channel. And if you are watching this right now and you have not subscribed, please do. Please hit that bell beside so you get a notification anytime um, I release a video. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at SeagonaSpeed252. And, I, you know, words can express how I feel about each and every one of you. Words can express how I appreciate you coming up to me and saying hello. From the YouTube call out to Cause and Coffee this Saturday, you know who you are, so I'm very thankful. Um, thank you for watching this channel. Stay tuned to the next video because See Gonna Speed 252 got some great things coming your way. So at this moment in time, See Gonna Speed 252 is out.